In this video, we're going to talk about one-to-one -one functions. So before we talk about one-to-one -one functions, let's recall what a function is. We talked about functions way back if you're in my class in Chapter 2. Um, so now we're going to look at what does it mean to be a one-to-one -one function. So recall that a function is a set of ordered pairs or a relation such that each element of the first set maps to exactly one element of the second set. And so we talked about a number of different things such as um, mapping cities to states and that would be a function as long as each city maps to one state. Uh, we also talked about mapping um, people in our class to their significant other and that would be a function as long as everybody in the class is faithful and committed to one person. Um, so now in order to be a one-to-one -one function it first has to be a function so each X has to map to one Y, but also each Y can only have one X. So before it could be a function. So let me just show you. You can have a mapping. So before each of these could all map to four, that this X maps to one Y, this X maps to one Y, and this X maps to one Y, and that would be a function. But now, each Y doesn't have its own X, and so it's not one-to-one. -one. So the one-to-one -one function means each X maps to one Y, and each Y is only mapped to from one X, okay? So when you're looking at the ordered pairs, you couldn't have any repeating X's to be a function. So now to be one-to-one, -one, you can't have any repeating X's, and you cannot have any repeating Y's. The formal definition for one-to-one -one function is if for A and B in the domain of F, if F of A equal F of B, then A equal B. And so basically what that's saying, F of A and F of B, so you have two, two numbers in the domain, A and B. F of A is the Y value that A maps to and F of B is the Y value that B maps to. So what it's saying is that if F of A equal F of B, meaning those two Y values equal, then that has to mean that your your two x value equals so your a equals to b so that's just saying that if they have if they share the same y value then they have to have the same x value because no um y has more than one x value and so that's the formal definition of one one function so, so let's look at some examples for example one we have two different sets of ordered pairs and we want to see if these define one one functions so if we start with f we have the point 1, 4, 2, 3, and negative 2, 4. So first of all, in order to be a function, you can't have any repeating x's. So if I look at the x's 1, 2, and negative 2, there are no repeating x's, so this is indeed a function. But now is it 1 to 1? In order to be 1 to 1, you can't have any repeating y's. Well, the y's are 4, 3, and 4. And so we have two repeating y's, the 4's. And so therefore, this is not 1 to 1. And so we'll do the same thing with G, or part B. G is negative 3, 4, 1, negative 1, and 2, 0. So first look at the X's, negative 3, 1, and 2. None of them are repeating, so this is a function. And now look at the Y's, 4, negative 1, and 0. None of those are repeating, so it's indeed a 1 to 1 function. So yes, 1 to 1. So if you want to know if it's 1 to 1 and it has a set of ordered pairs, you just look for repeating X's and repeating Y's. If you have a repeating X or repeating Y, then it's not a 1 to 1 function. For example, two, we want to look at the graph of uh, different functions or the graph of diff just different graphs and determine if it's a one-to-one -one function. So if we wanted to determine if a graph was a function, before we use the vertical line test. That's where you draw vertical lines. And as long as each vertical line passed through the graph at one point, then it was indeed a function. So now if we want to determine if it's one-to-one, -one, it has to first pass the vertical line test in order to be a function. Then we have to do the horizontal line test to make sure each Y has only one X. So if it passes the horizontal line test, you draw horizontal lines. If each horizontal line passes the graph in one spot, then it passes. And so therefore, it will be a one-to-one -one function. So we're looking at these different graphs here. And um, <clears throat> we first want to determine if A is a function. So if we draw vertical lines, you see each vertical line will pass through the graph in only one point. <clears throat> so now let's see if it's one-to-one. -one. So it's a function. Now let's see if it's one-to-one. -one. So now draw horizontal lines. If I draw a horizontal line there, it passes through once. But if I draw a horizontal line here, it passes through the graph in more than one point. And so therefore, it fails the horizontal line test. And so it is not 
one to one. And this is another way of writing one to one, one dash one. So this is not a one to one function. All right, what about part B? If you draw vertical lines, each vertical line passes through the graph at one point. So it's a function. <clears throat> now let's see if it's one to one. So every horizontal line I draw, it goes through once. Even here, it looks like the graph is flattening out, but it's not. As this graph continues to go out, it's continuing to go up. So even though it looks like it might pass through um, more than one point as you go up, it's only going to pass through once because this graph is going up. And so therefore, this passes the horizontal line test. So yes, this graph is one to one. So if you want to determine if something is one to one, the graph, then you will use the horizontal line test. So vertical line test first in order to be a function, and then horizontal line test in order to be a one to one function. For example three, now we want to use the definition to determine if a function is one to one. So we have two functions we want to see, um, f of x equal to x minus three, and f of x equal x squared plus one. So two different functions, we want to check to see if they're one to one, we're going to use the definition. So recall that the definition says if f of a equal f of b, then a equal b. So what we have to do is we have to assume that the if part is true, and we have to show that the then part would be true if the if part is true. So what that means is, so for part A, we're going to assume that f of A equal f of B. And so using that fact, we have to show that A equals B. Well, what does f of A mean? f of A means wherever there is an x, replace it with an A. So there was an x here, so now that would be 2A minus 3. So f of a is equal to 2a minus 3. So I'm replacing f of a with 2a minus 3. What about f of b? f of b will be the same way except replace x with a b. So f of b will be 2b minus 3. So I need to use this fact to show that a equals b. So I can add 3 to both sides. And that gives me 2a equal 2b. And then I could divide both sides by 2. And that gives me A equal to B. And so we assume that F of A was equal to F of B. And then we show that if that's the case, A has to equal B. So if we can show that, then that means, yes, this function is one to one. And if you think about this function, this is a form, function of the form MX plus B, which means it's linear, which means when you graph it, it's a line. And if you think about a line, if you was to draw vertical lines, it passes the vertical line test. And if you were to draw horizontal lines, it passes the horizontal line test. And so therefore, it's a one-to-one -one function, all right? So we would do the same thing for part B. We would assume that f of a equal f of b. Well, what is f of a? f of a means replace each x in this function with an a. So that would be a squared plus 1. And f of b means to replace each b, or means to replace each x with a b. And so that would be b squared plus 1. And so now we want to go through the same process to try to show that a equals b. So we will subtract 1 from both sides. We would get a squared equal b squared. And then in order to get rid of a square, you have to take the square root of both sides. And remember, anytime you take the square root, you have to take the plus and minus square root. So you end up with plus or minus a equal to plus or minus b. So this means that a is equal to positive b, a is equal to negative b, negative a is equal to positive b, and negative a is equal to negative b. So two of these are actually the same. These two are the same and those two are the same. But the whole point of the matter is that we don't we can't conclude that a is equal to b. A could be equal to b or a could be equal to negative b. So a and b could be the same or they can be opposites of each other. So if you just think about it, think of two and negative two. If I was to plug in 2 into this function, I would get 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. And if I was to plug in negative 2 into this function, I would get negative 2 squared plus 1, which is also 5. And so we have two different x's that map to the same y, which makes this not 1 to 1. So this is not a 1 to 1 function. So here are your 1 to 1 functions. So recall that a 1 to 1 function means each x maps to one y and each y maps to one x and so this is how you work with one-to-one -one functions and 
We want to know about one-to-one -one functions because one-to-one -one functions have what's called inverses. So um, if you understand this, these concepts of one-to-one -one functions, then go on and watch the next video about inverses. If not, if you have any questions, make sure you include them in the comments below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If this video helped you, also make sure you hit the like button as well. So I will see you in the next video.